an inspiration booster shot, welcome to this special mini episode of Meaningful Impact. Here's your host, Michael Organ. Many of life's most important lessons reveal themselves to us unexpectedly, by surprise. Such was the case for me in college while attending a class on the typically dry topic of organizational behavior. On that day, rather than delve into the mechanics of negotiating contracts between unions and management, instead, the professor assigned an allegory. That short story, titled A Turn of the Tide, first appeared in a book called Touch of Wonder by Arthur Gordon. The story begins with Gordon acknowledging a deep, pervasive sadness, referring to it as, quote, one of those bleak periods in life that many of us encounter from time to time a sudden drastic dip in the graph of living when everything goes stale and flat, energy wanes, enthusiasm dies, end quote. So the storyteller seeks the advice of a doctor who writes a series of four unorthodox prescriptions, each written on a separate sheet of an RX pad. The doctor folded the prescriptions and instructed Gordon to take them three hours apart over the course of one day at the place where Gordon was happiest as a child. For Gordon, that happy place was the beach. So, with little faith but no better alternative, Gordon drove to a deserted beach the next day. As he arrived at 9 a.m., Gordon unfolded the first prescription, instructions really, stated concisely with just two words. Listen carefully. Listen to what, Gordon thought, since no radios or electronics were allowed. With time, Gordon began to focus on the roar of the sea, the creaking cry of a gull, and an aircraft overhead. Upon climbing a sand dune, Gordon could hear nothing but the sea, which bellowed so loudly that all other sounds seemed to be obscured. But then, Gordon thought, there must be, quote, sounds beneath sounds, end quote. He discovered that if he quieted his internal thoughts and listened intently enough, he could hear the momentary gaps in the waves, the soft rasp of drifting sand, and the wind whispering through the dune grasses. His thoughts then drifted back to childhood, remembering his awe at things bigger than himself, the mysterious interdependence of the wind, tide, and current, and the, quote, cleanliness of it all, with every beach swept twice per day by the great broom of the sea. At noon, Gordon unfolded and read the second prescription, which said, try reaching back. Since the doctor had sent Gordon to a place where he used to be happy, Gordon assumed that his assignment was to resurrect comforting memories that used to be the foundations of his strength. It was slow going at first. Gordon's recollections were pleasant but not clear. That's when he decided to try reaching back as an impressionist painter would, filling in the vague impressions with details, colors, sounds, clothes, gestures, Soon, he could vividly remember the warmth of the sea's backwash swirling around his knees. He visualized the arc of his brother's fishing rod as he caught a fish and relived the glee they both felt. <laughs> Memories beyond the beach also rushed in, like when Gordon's father declined an urgent call to go to work, choosing instead to keep a commitment to take his kids to the circus. Gordon wrote, Across all the years, I remembered this and knew from the sudden glow of warmth that no kindness is ever really wasted or ever completely lost. These two first prescriptions were intended for Gordon to be in the right frame of mind for the core of the treatment, prescription three, which comes next when we return. The Meaningful Impact Awards are a high honor for exemplary corporate citizenship. PR pros will appreciate the publicist-friendly features to showcase award winners. To nominate a purpose-driven leader, organization, or product for a Meaningful Impact Award, visit MeaningfulImpact.com. At 3 p.m., Gordon unfolded the third prescription, which felt more like a command. Re-examine your motives. 
Initially, Gordon felt defensive. He strove for success, recognition, and greater financial security. There's nothing wrong with that, he reassured himself. But then a long, ignored internal voice reminded him that while those motives are not wrong, they're not enough. Maybe his work felt, quote, calculated, competent, and dead, end quote, because he was only using his time at work as a means to make money and pay bills. The sense of giving something, of helping people, of making a contribution, had been lost in a frantic clutch at security. Gordon concluded that, quote, As long as you feel you are serving others, you do your job well. When you are concerned only with helping yourself, you do the job less well, a law as inexorable as gravity. The doctor's final prescription asked Gordon to write his worries on the sand, which Gordon did with a seashell near the shoreline. An apt reminder that worries are transient. Tides and time wash them away. But I'd like to focus on the lessons learned from the third prescription. Gordon rediscovered that we enhance our own lives when our motive is to make a meaningful impact for others. I learned that lesson not just from his story, but also by the way my parents lived and by what my mom taught me on her literal deathbed. I had my Tuesdays with Maury experience in 2015 and 2016 at a time when my 82-year-old mother had already outlived her three-month cancer prognosis by six years. Suffering from end-stage cancer, she soldiered on for another seven months in hospice care, with all of her family knowing that the end was near. I believe that part of the reason that she held on so long was because she knew that I wasn't ready for her to go. I lived in another city, but would fly back to my hometown every two or three weeks to spend a few days with my mom at the hospital. Close to the end... My mother agreed to be interviewed on video so that her young grandchildren could remember her better. By this time, my mom required supplemental oxygen to breathe and tired easily, so we could film only short segments spread over multiple days. During these interviews, I asked my mom a lot of questions, phrased in different ways. But in retrospect, every question I asked my dying mother sought the same answer. What matters? What matters? My mom's answer, living a life you respect. For her, living a life she respected meant caring for her family at home and caring for others at work. She was the old-fashioned kind of registered nurse who spent a lot of time with each of her patients, improving their care by developing a bond with them. Unfortunately for me, I'm squeamish. So I couldn't do the kind of medical work that my mom and many others in my family do as doctors and nurses. But as Arthur Gordon rediscovered at the beach, and as my mom always knew, we can all live a life we respect by aligning our motives to make a meaningful impact. That's all for this episode. We hope that the next inspiring story will be yours. For ongoing inspiration about how to make your difference, subscribe to Meaningful Impact wherever you listen to podcasts.